Yo, 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 this is King Ernie coming to you guys live and direct. First and foremost, make sure y'all follow me at King Erna one on Instagram. Listen, Bear Season by Leek Moss is going to be a very honorable anti-classical type music. Listen, $100 a CD, you got to honor that. You know why? You would pay just about $100 for anything, you hear me? These days, a woman costs you a bean, they say. I mean, whatever the case may be, this is better than anything that a person can put in front of you because you're going to get some knowledge and you're going to get some honor. Remember that honor and knowledge together is a pure thing that no one can go against. That's why we call it pure honor. And this undeniable lay by Naheem, go follow it at U-N-D-B-L-E or L-B-E underscore underscore. Y'all ain't gonna grind me, but at the end of the day, I love this wear. You hear me? You know, something with some type of substance to it. You hear me? But listen, I wanna give y'all some pure honor tonight. Listen, a lot of y'all not gonna understand the honor I'm gonna give y'all tonight, and a lot of y'all are. Now, listen to me. I'm King Gurner, better known to the people. But guess what? In Philadelphia, raised in a neighborhood that I could say, it was a beautiful neighborhood. We messed it up. You hear me? Broad, not only Fern Rock section is where I was raised and born. Listen to me. A lot of honor, man, was back there at the time. But as growing up, going in and out of the can and finding out different things, I really find out Big Cheese, Big Wiz, you know. And uh, Skins was like probably the most predominantly thorough of the thorough when it comes to the OAs. Now, the youngest, we had, a, we had a whole array of us. A lot of dudes, a lot of good people came from this neighborhood. Like I said, we predominantly messed it up. But that ain't really what I want to get on today. I want to take y'all to 1990, around that time, 89, 90, I'm going to say. And I'm going to take y'all to a time where Kabani Savage was in my neighborhood predominantly. 24-7. Yeah, Kamaka Nidro. A lot of people gonna act like they don't know what I'm talking about. The reason why they're gonna act like I'm, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about is because we woke up and the block was switched over. People got some understanding and like we was on the other side of the street and they was on that side of the street in front of the, the first and most honorable before and after, when normal was cutting hair, you hear me? So, you know, we talking history here, we talking about even age, you had to be of age to really know what I'm speaking of here. And the reason how I was introduced to Kabani was Mandy, who was his girlfriend at the time, she grew up in a neighborhood and you know, her and her girlfriend, hot. we used to be like super tight before the years came about when me and Hot Brother had a problem, and he wound up leaving us. May his soul rest in peace. But around these times, it was a lot of love and unity and some money in reference to drugs in our community still. So we was all at it. You know, Dane get up early in the morning, come on his. You know, he coming down all the way down the bottom, you know, of where I'm from of uh, Ione and, you know, getting me every morning. We getting up early. I'm talking about early. Because I already see, I had a years before that I hustled prior. So I was damn near like an OG in 90 at a young age. Because I was on Park Avenue Grange when it first was open. You know, brown bag when OG, <laughs> you know, they had it lit. You know, the same drug was there for ages. And I, I hustled for Terry and Cab at that time. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, 125 packs, ran around with Chase. You know, I learned the streets really then, you know. Chase was my OG. A lot of these other guys, you know, they wasn't even standing in our way, man. We was knocking down boulders. I was young coming up, and I was introduced to a lot of honor at that age. But uh, all the way back to 90, and we go to when Mandy was walking down the street, and I said something to her. And we talked for a couple of seconds, and Bond said something to her. She crossed the street or whatever, but I didn't know they was boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. So when I seen her later, she told me, yeah, you ain't know I mess with the boy, but you know, I ain't worried about none of that because first of all, I don't know how these dudes up here hustling on my block. But 
the reason why they were able to is because they was connected to some OGs that was like, oh, we got to respect it at that time. And that was that cunt Ray, who was Manny's, I don't even want to say that he's Manny's, that him, Kabani and him are cousins, the way this cunt carries it. Cunt, by the visit, he goes and tell them people and make up a bunch of lies on Kabani and his folks. So I don't even want to bring that cunt up, but this is the reason why they respect it, because we thought he was silent at that time. Come to find out he was telling back then, he was a rat back then. Well, nonetheless, me and Bonnie had a few words. It was, you know, it wasn't nothing serious. It was more or less like, damn, I see you, homie, or whatever. Damn, I see you too, you know. Him and Dane was real tight. So it was easy for us to be cool. And while a lot of other stayed across the street and didn't hustle, we were able to hustle just about anywhere we would like because I think at that time, us being young and wild as we were, there would have been a lot of gun smoke out there if we wasn't allowed to do what we wanted to do because at the time, come up at that age, like me, him, rain, eyes wide, uh, you know, toe, a lot of good dudes at that time was around, whereas though, you know, we was all standing on man time, Tommy Bonds, you know, we was all on man time though, you know, we was getting to a coin, and like I said, they was hustling in the neighborhood, and they got a nice little bag, eventually graduated and left the neighborhood, we were still trying to figure it out, but they had figured it out to a high platform because they started putting their honor down in reference to street action. So when I say honor, I'm not speaking of the same honor that this campaign carries. I'm speaking of the honor of the streets when I'm speaking on these individuals. And from what I'm hearing, I start going to jail a lot. I know like the middle of 90 to 93, I went away and I came home 93. But you know, it was the same thing. They were still up there, but it, I think they was like dropping at that time. You know, it was a little different. The fat dude that lived on the corner of Marvine, lived in my man Omar O'Crib, he was there. So it was like a different feel. But, you know, I still always done me both sides. It didn't matter. I never really had problems. When I did have problems, I solved them to a way, you know, I was honored and never disrespected again. So when you see Bond growing, even when he was down here, you know, you drive past, you see him, he's growing, he's growing, he's growing. You're hearing his name ring. To the point, he's not on the tip we were on. And, you you know, as a dude that, you know, that really was into that hand-to-hand -hand thing real heavy, I was kind of admired by it. Like, damn, that's thorough. You know, he get to some money because you got a good dude that going to be able to look out for other dudes that got some honor in their heart. So I respected it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes probably didn't. But, you know, at the end of the day, Bond made him respect it. <laughs> That's one thing about him. You wasn't going to disrespect that light-skinned guy and get away with it. And um, what killed me the most, and I know it killed Bond later on, and I know that still bothers him more than anything, along with these false murders being on him. I don't believe it. No one is going to ever have me believe that Bond issued this. I don't care what was played on them tapes. Those tapes could have been of him and main man talking could have been about anything. Could have been about anyone outside of the specific people that were, you know, harmed or whatever in the home. And my heart goes out to those people, family, their friends. I'm not here to get a story based off of glorifying anything that negative. I just don't believe that that came from by me knowing him. Bottom line, you know, so after a while, you're hearing about how they're carrying it, though, in the streets in reference to the hustle frame of it not the violence just the hustle part of it the i'm fly pull up we jump out the honor and tech and all that and uh i think bond downfall was caring for those who meant him no well and this is to all the big time drug dealers that might be around in this world i don't know you you don't know me but i'm gonna give you an understanding of something tonight and when I give you an understanding of this, you're going to catch it and you're going to say, damn, King Gurner, you know what? I get it. Bond's downfall was helping individuals that were around him that were weak. Yes, that were weak. The homicide that's, that put him down before all this other nonsense that come about was in reflection of that cunt. 
one. I'm telling you, everyone, I'm telling you the story of this. I don't want you to ever antagonize these type of guys. Don't ever go after the same way I'm giving it is the way it is, keeping it in the heart. But don't use it as nothing physical or mental because these dudes that had you ADX, man, and away forever. And uh, Bree isn't here to have a person ADX, but I'm pretty sure if he was, outside of him being a notorious murderer, I'm pretty sure he'll lock you up also. And Bree and Twin somehow conjured up something from Twin getting treated like a sucker. Dude, you know, Lil Meats from Cayuga, his brother. Solid man, you hear me? Super solid. I don't say these guys' names and I don't talk about those who aren't living anymore to the point where as though we give them a name because that's not what my honor stands at. My honor stands on the story that this man was a good man and he was a friend of mine. Because he took what he took from twin. Some things was said and some things was done. And let's just put it this way. That little Meech brother isn't here anymore. And my heart goes out to Meech and his family because he's a solid guy also. You hear me? But I want to make sure that y'all get an understanding. It's the weak guys that cause confusion against the dudes that got honor in their veins. And it's good guys who say, damn. I love that weak guy. That's my man. Your man that have you in a cell in ADX forever because you follow the path of weakness when you begin to care about a weak individual. Yes, 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 not everyone is a killer. We understand that part of it. But when you see people who are in the streets that are a part of it and don't understand killing, and then when a situation arises, Oh, they think killing should now be it. You need to watch out because you may tie yourself up with something so tight that it'll throw you in ADX boxed in with no way out to breathe because of a rat. Now, we understand the streets and the laws of honor that if, you know, I'm participating and this all go down and I got to go to that box. Hey, you got to go to that box. But when you plan and set yourself up for failure and weakness, you'll never win. Twin and Bree were weak. They were weak youngins. There are other individuals out here in these streets, and you know that the person are weak, but you still put your arm around them. You still tell them, I love you, when you know if it go down on any way, shape, and form, they're going to be just like Bree. And they're going to tell and book you in. They're going to be quick to do it. See, I'm not going to get into what the twin done and what he didn't do. Because we understand that guy situation is so sensitive. To have you in ADX and you're not making a threat. You're just giving an example to the youth. But I want my example, youngins. To be excused of that rat and putting him in any type of history because I feel as though he's just another weakling that can never be mentioned by King Erna. We don't need him when we have Bree as a bigger rat. One who says, I'm going to put it down in every which way it came from. He stood over top of this honor in reference to the streets and wiped it out of there, didn't he? Didn't he? But also, he didn't have a problem with why he was wetting everything up, running around with that wire, drinking them ounces of that syrup, any and everywhere in the world. He didn't care. As long as he had his shot and his wire, he was going far as possible. But he went too far. Somehow, some way, the land reproduced what he was initiating on others, and that's murder. Yeah, youngins, that's what happens out in these streets. It could go either way, and there is no one that's bigger than the other. The best man gets the drop. Never forget that. The winner got the drop. So while you're driving to your wife's house, or while you're driving to your mistress' house, or while you're leaving your car just parked, and somebody's able to, huh, Put something underneath your car and follow you all the way to your door. The 
This is the streets. This is what it produces. You must leave it now, youngin. Let today be your last day. Let it be your last for you. Finish it, don't look back. Get you a small business, rebuild and build. You get you into a credit union and they will give you money, young man, to build. And you don't have an excuse. You don't have to be set up and put away by the same ones that you loved and hugged. The same ones you said, no. Nah. He said, what about you? And he done what? Oh, forget it. It's a wrap. Put you in that penitentiary for the rest of your life. You want that? You want to get all this money. You want to make sure you win. And the same ones that you're running with daily, knowing your whole routine and everything about you, wipe it all away. My heart goes out to them children. You know why? It's any innocent kids that are laying somewhere right now. Don't know that their father is being an idiot. Don't know that their mother is being an idiot and not protecting their home and not protecting their lives by indulging in these things. Where do we win? We lose. We don't win. They win every time. They get all the money in the world. They get the suits lined up and they get their jurors. And they 12 you and you pick them. And at that time, life becomes a gamble. They got Atlantic City. They got Las Vegas. They got parks, casinos in Philly. They got it everywhere. We carry it with under. How we carrying it from now on? Positivity. Why? Brilliant minds like Kabani Savage deserves to be on top of a billboard somewhere teaching something that has to do with business, real estate, and something that has honor, not because these cunts were weak and they pulled him into situations that caused him not only his life, but his honor in some because the lies that they're putting on him about these children is only leading and his cousin is the only one that done that. God, my God. What is life becoming when your family are putting you in the penitentiary and young and this the life you chose? Do you want to be downtown in front of one of these federal government judges and getting hung like we in slavery? Nah. So Nick saw that. Tonight, we doing some honor snatching. We're going back in the grave and we're pulling cunts out. Sabri, you're standing trial, you cunt. Yes, sir. And I'm going to say this. With all due respect to those who may have loved that man. To all due respect for those who still, I ain't going to say respect him because y'all don't get the respect. But for those who are attached somehow, I want y'all to understand I'm pulling him out of this grave and snatching his honor and smacking him because you could have.